Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. We are shooting episode 311. Today is 23rd of November. And we're going to talk about the math behind a winning portfolio. This is the math that is common to all weekend investing strategies, common to every professional investor trader out there who does his entire uh, calculation of his portfolio based on this math so it's also called the casino math but we'll uh, look at that post the market review psu banks once again taking the lead up one percent up 22.5 percent in a month 40.5 percent in three months the market was choppy today it opened the gap up nifty came down and closed the gap started to go up again and just when we were about to break out of the morning high there was a sudden selling towards the end and the, the nifty essentially closed uh, virtually flat at 0.1 percent uh, with the index taking the average of the last 15 minutes of trade bank nifty closed up 0.6 percent private banks also up 0.5 percent so banking is the only sort of safe haven right now which is keeping the strength in the market Commodities, pharma, real estate, autos were mild gainers. Metals and IT stocks slumping again. The dollar index has started to raise its head again near about 107. And that whenever that happens, it becomes detrimental to uh, the emerging market scenario. Uh, in terms of uh, broader indices, most of the broader indices were within the 0.1 to 0.6 percent range but small caps uh, a good change today that was leading the market at almost 0.6 percent up mid and small caps index also up 0.35 percent nifty next 50 also up 0.19 percent within the weekend investing small cases uh, several strategies doing quite well mi50 mi35 mi25 all which have small cap flavor uh, gaining more than 1%. MIATH2, which has come back very strongly after its uh, sputtering start last year, uh, up 1.35%. MI20 doing quite well. MI All Cap, MIATH, MI30, all in the green. MI Evergreen and uh, uh, MI uh, uh, India Top 10 staying a bit on the sidelines. Side Heat map for the day, you can see the br most bright red spot here is Adani Enterprise. They are going to raise more money from the public, for possibly a rights issue maybe, minus 3.24% on that. Uh, most other Adani stocks also taking some beating. Uh, State Bank, Bajaj Finance, uh, HDFC Life, uh, ONGC, these were the stocks which displayed near about 1% or more than 1% gain. Uh, other than that, the market remained pretty sideways. Top gainers, RHI, Magnista up 13%, Rashtri Chemical Fertilizers 11.5%, fertilizer, uh, fertilizer and Chem up 10.7%, NBCC up 10.5%, Rail Vikas you were remembering, uh, uh, you would remember from yesterday it, it had been demolished yesterday in the trade and today it has come back very very strongly at plus 10 percent electra green which was up yesterday is down sharply eight percent so volatility seems to have gone up in some several of these mid cap names in zinc down six percent paytm down another five percent now at 452 i mean this is just a train wreck currently Zomato down 3.5%, Scheffler India down 3.4%. What can I say? I mean, all these stocks that have been continuously falling uh, at every level, people have been saying that they have value, but you know, you need to quantify basis which you will be buying these stocks. Uh, if you find value in something at 2000 and then it goes down to, uh, you know, 450 then there's something wrong in the valuation metrics that you are using. So let's come back to the topic, the math behind a winning portfolio. So first and foremost, for most new investors, because old investors and, you know, 
the, the, the seasoned investors probably know all this uh, already but this is more for new investors or people who are struggling with their investing is that you don't have to be right at all times this uh, fetish that we have especially in trading uh, less so in investing but uh, especially in trading that you know every trade should go right every trade uh, unless it goes right you know i have to beat myself up why did i take that trade it doesn't work that way almost all trading and investing greats of the world don't have a winning uh, win loss ratio of more than 40% or 50% in fact the bet, the best traders even work at 35 40% so having more winners and less losers is not the only sort of thing in the winning equation uh, you will find everybody running for 80% probability of win 90% probability of win but the professional trading world tells you the opposite that you need not be above 50% you need not be above 60% but what needs to happen right is that whenever you are right that win has to be big whenever you are wrong that loss has to be small these two put together along with your win loss ratio will set your overall balance sheet right so the whole idea is that whenever we start to bleed we must stop that bleeding asap and whenever our horses are running hard and they are winning we must let them win and we must let the winners run so this is very simple but somehow very difficult to execute for a lot of people and once you have a framework basis which you will uh, execute so a, a defined framework you know what to buy when to buy how much to buy and when to sell defined framework will tell you exactly where to exit exactly where to enter exactly how much to enter with so on so forth so this is very very optimal uh, sort of matrix to have a very nice peaceful sleep and you know and you let the math work itself for you so you are not really once you have this rolling and your your framework is set then you are allowing the math to do the entire work and not you know not at the start of every trade it's it's upon to it's upon your input whether this trade will go right or wrong where you will enter where you will exit so on so forth so this matrix if you see on the screen 50% winning trades let's say portfolio a 50% losing trades average winner let's say wins you 50% average loser loses you 50% net result is zero so you did 10 transactions 50 went right 50 went wrong in 50 you made 50% each in, in the other 50 you lost 50% each the portfolio return is zero so this we definitely don't want next portfolio is let's say your average winner is much higher than the average loser let's say we win 150% whenever we win but we lose 75% whenever we lose so but our winning percentage is low here so only 25% of the time we are winning so 10 trades 25% of the time or let's say 100 trades 25 times we are winning we make 150% each time 75% of the time we are losing we lose 75% on each trade we end up with a portfolio return of minus 19% portfolio c you have very high winning rate so you have 75% probability of a win you have 25% probability of a loss very nice but whenever you are winning you are winning 10% only and whenever you are losing you are losing 70% which at this portfolio c is the is is the most common portfolio out there that yes you are winning a lot of times but you are panicking early you are not allowing your winners to run you are getting out in 10% but once the stock starts to go down you are looking at it like a deer in the headlights and you are waiting for it to come down average loser 70 70% average winner 10% overall portfolio return minus 10% now portfolio d here the average winner brings home 50% and let's say average loser also brings home 50% fine we just have to win more than we lose here so if we win even 55% of the times 
and we lose 45% of the time, we bring home 5% on the overall deal. Not bad. Given that we had a 50-50 uh, 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 average win and an average loss. Now, portfolio E, you can still win with abnormally low winning percentage. So, just 15% is what we're winning. So, we do 100 transactions in a year. Only 15 of them go right. Of course, this is very difficult to do psychologically. But let's, just for the sake of it, portfolio E is, we, we do only 15 trades, right? 85 trades go wrong. This could be trading, this could be investing, this could be anything. But our average winner brings home 150% on each transaction. Our average loser loses us just 10%. Yet, our portfolio return is 14%. So, this is somewhat akin to, you know, what venture capitalists do. They will invest in 100 startups, maybe 15 of them will win some money and some of them will win larger, but most of them will go uh, as a loss, almost a complete loss and they'll still make money on this. Portfolio F, sort of best of both worlds. And this is the metrics that we see in most weekend investing strategies is that win loss ratio is somewhere around 35, 40, max 50%. So 35% winning. 65% we will still lose. That is okay. But the average winner is let's say 100% and the average loser is only 30%. So every time we win, we, we double. But every time we lose, we lose 30%. So we cut the loser as it is going down, but we allow the winner to run. And the portfolio return on this portfolio comes out to be 16%. So this is very close to what you will see in most momentum strategy that we can invest in. So I hope this point is clear that it is, you're allow, only allowing the math to sort of take its course. You're designing the strategy in such a way so that the math works in your favor without you having to tweak anything every time you do a transaction. So the persistent goal in every momentum strategy, as I tweeted this morning also, the win rate is, is to vary between 40 and 60 percent and the mathematical outcome if you have the winning to losing ratio 1 is 0.5 is to 1, 2 is to 1, 3 is to 1 uh, that will depend on the uh, that will determine the outcome of your portfolio and I had given the examples of uh, our top 10 strategy and you can see that over the last 5-6 years in, uh, if this strategy was running you would see that the largest winners are in the region of 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. But the largest losers here in the strategy are in the 16 to 30% bracket. So the largest losers are shorter, smaller. The largest winners are bigger. So if you will see across the spectrum of all wins and losses, you will still get a good uh, average win to average loss ratio. So this is all I had for today's daily bite. Please do Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you like the content, please do give us a like. We would like that. And the best you can do to help us pro propagate this channel is to share it with your friends and family. I hope that you are liking the content and that you will uh, continue to send us your feedback and suggestions as you always do. And we are very thankful that uh, we have your viewership on this. Thank you. Bye.